Just want to thank God for this opportunity God has given unto us this morning to hear the word. I was praying about it right from the time when Ashish told me that uh, you'll have to minister here. And the, the thing which the Lord really put into my heart was something to do with the one thing which God wants from us. The last time I came here, I changed my message. When I was ministry, when I was about to minister, I had prepared my PPT. And I always do a PPT presentation so that people not only listen, but also can see. And if want, they can you know, just write down those messages as well. And the last time I changed the entire message and I went to Zechariah 9.12 and uh, talking about return to the, uh, uh, your, your stronghold, your prisoners of hope. That was my message on which I had changed. But this time I'm not going to change any message, the same message because the worship, you know, which we were, uh, you know, having today. So I was talking about the one desire in the last song also. You alone are my strength and my shield. To you alone, um, may my spirit yield. For you alone are my heart's desire. You alone are my heart's desire. And that's what God wants of each one of us. The one thing which I'm going to minister on is the one thing which is written in the word of God. And there are three times this one thing is mentioned in the Bible. The first time the one thing is mentioned is the time when David talks about it in Psalms 27 and verse 4. He says, one thing I desire of the Lord and that I'll seek after. One thing. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you to start the slide there. Okay, then we can go. Just introducing the entire thing. Then the second time the one thing is mentioned is mentioned in the New Testament when Jesus spoke about the one thing to Martha. The one thing. And the third time, the one thing is mentioned in the Bible, is mentioned in the book of Philippians, when Paul himself speaks about the one thing I need. So there is one thing which David wanted to do, there is one thing which Jesus told Martha to do, and there is one thing which Paul himself is saying, I want to do, even after being an apostle, planting so many churches, he says one thing, and I believe here, there's the one thing which God will ask you and me, what you have done. It's not a great ministry, it's not a great degrees, it's not a great experience, but the one thing which God wants from you and me. This one thing that differs with many people. Many times we can be in the church, but still can be out of the church. There are many times we can be out of the church, but still in the church, in the presence of God. That one thing makes the difference in our lives, the one thing. And that is what Paul is trying to tell the church of Philippians. The one thing I do, church. But before we get into that one thing, you and I know that the letter of Philippians, which Paul wrote, was written not from a very cozy atmosphere, but was written from the Roman jail. From the Roman jail. And this Paul, when he writes to the Philippians, he talks about all the challenges which he has faced, but at the same time, he also speaks about all the things which he was doing in the past, but at the same time, now he says that this is what I do now. This is what I do now. It is not an easy task to write any letter from a situation like a jail. But Paul wrote many of his letters from that situation, in that situation. Because his heart was focused. And church, I want us to know that one thing which we can focus upon this morning in our lives. And not only this morning, but it should be a continual affair for the rest of our lives till we see Jesus. And the word this morning is from Philippians 3. 13 and 14. And it says here, now you can start the slide because that's the presentation there as well. Brethren, I do not count myself to be I've apprehended, but one thing I do. One thing I do, what? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The one thing, church. Paul also needed such a great apostle. He was so focused man. David, such a great king, was a focused man. 
and Martha in all her servings to the Lord. Jesus tells her that you need one thing. One was, David says, I desire one thing. Jesus says, you need one thing. And Paul says, I do one thing. And this morning, even if you forget the entire message, but if you hear this word and remember this word, the one thing you, you, you and I need to do in our lives. And as far as Paul is concerned, he talks about what he needs to do. The next slide, please. To do that one thing, I believe we need to push back, to push forward. We need to push back to push forward. Everyone who has a mission has one thing to do. And everyone who has one thing to do has his priorities absolutely right. Your priorities can change your focus, church. Our priorities can change our focus. So we need to have our priorities that just as Paul had his priorities right. Paul counted his past as a rubbish. To receive Christ. To receive Christ as his reward. What was that? Paul had his priorities right, church. And in this particular thing, he was able to communicate his priorities to the Philippians. The first thing which he says, he says, he discerned what hindered him. Verse 7 and 8. If we read verse 7 and 8, it talks about it. Paul understood it. The one thing which hindered him. He discerned that thing. The second thing he talks about, he discovered what he wanted. It is not only discovering what hindering us, but also discovering what he wants. And that is what also is mentioned in verse 9. And verse 9 speaks about it. And we found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness, which is from God by faith. He discovered what he wanted. Paul wanted God's righteousness. Not his own. Christ was his only pursuit. Christ was his only focus. So the first thing which Paul did to push back, to push forward, was to discover those things which hindered him. The second thing he does is, he discovered those things which he wanted to do. And the third thing he talks about, he was determined. He was determined to how to get it. Verse 12 to 14, if you read it talks about the determination of Paul, about that focus which he had with single-minded passion, I believe, God, that Paul forgot the past and pursued the prize of his call. Pursued the prize of his call. Church, for us to move forward, for church, for us to have that focus, we need to do these three things which Paul did. A man on a mission, a man on a mission should know, he knows what hinders us, hinders him. He also discovers the things which he needs to do and he also discovers the thing, how to get it done. There are three things. Hindrance, doing, understanding what we need to do and the third thing is actually doing it. The next slide. And if we read in the Bible, he talks about putting away things. He's a focused man. Paul is a focused man. Unless we have focus in our lives, church, we'll not be able to move where God wants us to go. Abraham had focus. I'll come back to that. Okay. Paul's absolute focus made him absolute willing to let go of all the nice things which did not matter. There were many nice things which Paul discarded. The first thing which Paul discarded was his heritage. Paul talks about that he is a Hebrew of Hebrew. You know, in India, we can understand that. Because in Indian uh, culture, okay, no, I'm not even the Christian culture, but the Indian culture, our traditions, we talk about our heritage. I come from this family. We belong to this family. This is our gotra. You understand the word gotra? Okay. This is our gotra. And, and you, you and I know that in India, people even are not willing to marry out of their caste. Right or wrong? There's a heritage, there's the, there's what, what you say, a name, a family name, a family tradition. And we always want to go along with it. And Paul was one of that. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews, verse 5 says. He's, he was 
from the tribe of Benjamin, a pure lineage. Verse 5 says again about Paul. Then he says about his legalism. He was a strict Pharisee. He never moved from his convictions as a Pharisee. And because his conviction was so strong, his past zeal, which was there, he was a persecutor of the church, a murderer. He did not murder the goons. He murdered the good. Amen. He murdered the people of God, the people of the way. And the last thing he says, his self-righteousness. According to him, in verse 6, he led a blameless life as a Pharisee. But Paul says that with all these things, I have started to put away all these things away from my life. Away. He's a man of focus. He's a man on a mission. And church, this is what the Lord wants of us. To do away with our past glories. To do away with our past trophies. Okay. And to really focus on him. Focus is the most important thing of every hero of the word of God. Starting with Abraham. Focus. Abraham was a focused man. Therefore he left his very own country to move to a land which he did not know about. Can you believe this? In today's world, it would be foolishness. If I say I am go I'm going to travel and I do not know where I'm traveling, you know, people will call me foolish. And I believe that was the case of Abraham as well. When Abraham and his family was called, where are you going from Ur? Where are you going to settle? What is going to happen? What's your plan? He never knew anything except for one thing. God says, move out. And he moved out. It's a very difficult situation, church. I've gone through it. When God told me, step out from the church where I was and step in, I never understood this word. What do you mean by step out and what do you mean by step in? I never understood. And for two years, I really battled in my heart what was God trying to speak to me. Step out, you will step in. But that is what God's. And there is nothing in the Bible. There is no script in the Bible which says step out and you will step in. Similar to Abraham, when God says, leave your father and your mother. Leave your country, leave your kindred, leave your people. And move to a land which I am going to show you. To a city which I am going to show you. Abraham knew nothing. But Abraham was focused. He did not see the kingdom, but he left everything. The second one is Joseph. Focused on the greatness of God. He focused on his dreams which God gave him. He focused on that. And ultimately you and I know that his small dream which his father also despised the second dream and the first dream where his brothers also despised him ultimately came to be fulfilled in Joseph's life. Right? We know the scriptures in Genesis. So Joseph was a focused man. His dreams, which he focused upon, on the greatness of God, which God had showed him, came to pass. Moses turned his back on Egypt because he saw what was God's plan. He focused on God's plan. Moses, what we call him? A vagabond? Is that the right one? A pagoda in Hindi we say? One who ran away from Egypt? God puts him back to Egypt. Why? Because his focus. Moses' focus. What was the focus? What did Moses do in Egypt first? He wanted to deliver his people on his own strength. Moses wanted to deliver the people on his own strength. And he couldn't do it. He did it in his own might, killing an Egyptian. And when people came to know about it, he knew if Pharaoh comes to know about it and Pharaoh ultimately knew it, he ran for his life. 40 years in the kingdom of Egypt, 40 years in the wilderness, and then 40 years in the wilderness, okay, when he was alone with his in-laws, where he got married as well, and then again 40 years with his people, going into the wilderness before he, he couldn't enter the, what do you say, the promised land. But Moses was focused. Stephen died a martyr because of his focus. Paul gave everything 
to focus on Christ. Church, I'm talking about that one thing, that one focus which you and I need to have in our life. Unless we know what we do, unless we know where we are going, unless we know what God wants of us, we will just be drifting here and there. And many Christians today are like that. For us coming to church, going to work, for prayer meetings and everything has become the new norm. After we become believers, right or wrong? It's the truth. There's nothing wrong in it. But God still wants us to have that focus in life. What is that which God wants you and I to do it? As Paul is talking about here. The next slide. Thank you. How to gain this focus? Two things, church. Priorities and concentration. Priorities and concentration. You and I will never be focused if our priorities are not right. You and I will never have, will be able to fulfill that focus if we do not have that concentration. Don't think it's a management lecture. Okay. I believe that thing. Our focus is we, can, we as people of God can easily be distracted. Yes or no? People can dis get distracted with music, with the things of the world. People can di get distracted because of their career. Some people can dis get distracted in relationships. Distractions are heavy in this world. Even the church can become a distraction if our focus is not right. I can tell you that. It's a very strong statement. But it can happen. But Paul... To gain focus, one thing about Paul was his priorities were right and he knew what to concentrate. And this is what something which I, I, I just wrote it down. A person who knows his priorities but lacks concentration knows what to do but never gets it done. How many of us know what to do but we never get it done? You know why? Because we are not concentrated. We are not focused on things. When I picked up doing this MDiv, okay, at the age of, uh, today I'm 59, 56, okay. People was, are telling me why you want to do all these things. But then I knew one thing for sure. I wanted to do it because if I'm a minister of the gospel, I need to have at least a formal education in something, right? Can you go to a doctor who is a quack? A doctor without a certificate? No one goes there. Why? Because we know he's a quack. Today, my, my wife and my family, sometimes they laugh at me. I'm the doctor of my church as well. Do you know that thing? I'm a doctor of my church. You know why? Because when my people need challenges, medical challenges they have, they send their reports, they send their x-ray reports, they send their this report, that report, all on WhatsApp to me. What I do, I'm a doctor... Okay, who has done Googleopathy? You understand this word? I check it for them. You know why? Because once you go to the doctors, once you go to this hospital, they tell you to do a lot of tests. See, this test, that's, and, and the results come in, and they don't understand anything. Whatever the doctors say, they do it. They fleece. You know it. If it is in Mumbai, it's in Bangalore as well. Because health is a business today. Right or wrong? So I become a doctor there also. Today in the church, I'm a legal consultant. Not in my church, in the Mumbai church. I'm a legal consultant, I'm not done law. But people ask me legal questions. I'm telling you this thing. And how do I understand this? How to reply? I re train myself to do it. So therefore, even in this word of God, I got myself trained to do this MD for my CBC. I was really focused. My children, my family knows about it. I'm a focused man. If I put my hand to something, I know I have to do it. I have to excel in it. And that is what I'm writing there. A person who knows his priorities but lacks concentration. If I have not been concentrated, I would have not been able to complete my MDiv. When I first went to SABC, that we, have, we were a batch of 50 people all across India. And they said, our experience in this program is that only 10% of you will complete it in three years. Only how many percent? Ten percent. Fifty percent will leave the course halfway. And the other forty will do it in four years, five years, six years of time as they feel right to do. 
and they ask each one of us a question how many years will you complete this course in? and everyone had to answer and when my turn came I wanted to tell them I will do it in two years but I kept my mouth shut I said three years if the course is there I'll do it in three years and she said, I want to tell you this thing I could have completed this course in two years but the institution did not allow me to do it last year I would have completed this institution did not allow me to do it because it was against their norm so I had to complete it in three years what I'm talking to you church is concentration in life and concentration is much more when you are young and I believe as young people you can be more concentrated in your life in your priorities in your focus with God I'm not saying that the older people cannot be focused cannot be concentrated they do not have concentration we also can have concentration if we put your heart and soul into it we can set up practice right we can have a concentration the second thing a person with concentration but no priorities has excellence without progress without progress you would have excellence but there'll be no progress and God and us we need to progress together everyone in the Bible progressed they walked with God for Enoch it says he walked with God and he was found uh, he was not found uh, again okay God lifted him up so how to gain that focus starve your distractions feed your focus starve your distractions feed your focus I could I speak a lot on this slide but I have less time next one okay We have to understand this thing. There are decisions which we need to make on focus. Decisions which are required for focus church. And these decisions are going to help us to stay focused, to really be stay focused. And the, some of the things which I mentioned there, okay, is the ultimate thing. The first thing first, the urgent thing first, the unpleasant thing which are the hard things first, then the unfinished which is the last thing first and then it talks about the unfulfilling or the dull things first. but we need to do something we have to put something first unless we keep something first we will never be focused and there'll be no decision based focus focus needs decision from you and me you have to understand this thing there are many things we can do it may be the most boring things in our lives but if we feel that this is the thing which we need to do to get a focus right let us do it the next slide if talk about paul he exemplifies himself of a leader and if you have to get focus we have to work on ourselves first many people want to work on others first I worked in an organization and an engineering organization and management says get the work done out of your people that's true nothing wrong but the first thing which I believe one has to do if you have to really get focused is to work on ourselves the pastor needs to work on himself the Bible also talks it what does the Bible speak about it the sheep resembles whom? The sheep resembles whom? The shepherd. Right? If you pick up any children from here and look at them, you will be able to know which family they belong to. If you speak their family. Ah, this quality is from the father, this quality is from the mother, or maybe a, a mix of it. Work on ourselves, church first. And I want to tell each one of you to work on yourself. We, are, we can become our greatest asset or we can be our greatest liability. We can, you can be a blessing. This is a biblical term. Or you can become a curse. And the Bible says, you choose what you want to be. An asset or a liability. That's the commercial term. That's the business terms. And the Bible, the spiritual thing, the biblical term is either you can become a blessing or you can become a curse. Work on yourself. Joshua says, I and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Moses says, 
choose for choose unto you this day whom shall you serve sorry uh, choose for yourself life or death right blessing or a curse moses talks about he says but choose life choose blessing and my exaltation to you is choose to become an asset a blessing into the kingdom of god the second thing work on your priorities not only work on yourself but work on our priorities get our the important things done first what is the important thing do we have the to do list whenever i see my daughter she has one diary and she has written to do list i never done that but i i really thought that was good for her to do that what is the to do list she had whether it's work or whether it's reading the bible whether it's it's washing clothes folding clothes whatever the mother has told us a to do list do we have a to do list today even as leaders as pastor of a church and if we do not have then we all have the most ch- the biggest challenge today is, is to really you know do whatever things come first if someone calls me up and i feel ha ah, this more urgent than i do that thing work your priorities work in your strength you can reach your potential if you do what does philippians 4:13 says anyone knows philippians 4:13 except i will not want my family to speak philippians 4:13 anyone knows the scripture by heart yeah i can do all things to christ that's not the full verse who strengthens me important right god strengthens church and what i'm talking about working in your strength i'm talking to believers i'm talking to the church our strength comes from god our strength comes from god you can do all things to christ who strengthens me now don't get me wrong if you say you want to be modi you will never become a modi right that's not the right priority for you that's not strength you say by by my god strength i'll become a pm of this country i'm not talking about that if god's plan for you is to be like a joseph to rule egypt then only you'll be your strengths are based on god's plan don't use the scripture out of context the church has failed in this if we have used scriptures out of context work with your brother this is very important in the church i liked what pastor was saying now as a church let's pray for one another and that's the thing in the church today that's the thing in the kingdom and not only your church church not only new life fellowship but pray for the body of christ if you know the challenges which karnataka is going through one of the most challenging states for christianity today yes or no pastor we always were thinking that karnataka was safe south india is safe more gospel based states here but i want to tell you maharashtra we have not faced this kind of thing because i am into the uh, what do you say the cha- the legal these things also okay so i know in maharashtra we don't have that kind of challenges which today you have here see the challenges in karnataka but church pray answer is with the church answer is not with the government answer is not with wisdom of any man the answer is in prayer amen so continue to pray church work with your brother work with different churches the last time i met sam was for the body of christ meetings pastor sam i'm talking about pastor sam bm samuel okay bm samuel i'm talking about him okay what was for the body of christ meeting 2 3 years back work with your brother you know it says it is very important to be together the bible also talks about it two are better than one why the scripture says if one falls the other will pick him up right or wrong marriage also is the same we need to why to pick up the other to move forward work with your brother yes sister the last three thing which i want to tell you and i finish the first thing which paul talks about forget the past and the slide see the forget the past because the reason why to forget the past is it's not going to come back past is not going to come back and what is the beautiful scripture in the bible anyone has this scripture related to forget the past in the bible 
Anyone knows any scripture? I know. I'm not asking my family. One thing, the first rule is that it's Isaiah 43, 17 and 18. What does the scripture say there? I think 17, 18, just check them all. 18 and 19 can be, but I still uh, have my doubts there. 17, 18 would be the scripture. It says, do not remember the former things. No, forget the former things. Do not remember the things of the old. For behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Talks about forgetting the past. Isaiah tells the children of God to forget. To remember not. Right? Now 17, 18, right? 18, 19? Okay, I stand corrected. We can look at the past, learn from the past, but we can't live. And that is what the church of God, the kingdom of God has suffered. Because we lived in the past glories. We can learn from it, we can look at it, but we cannot live in it. Why? Because we have already given our past in the hands of Jesus. Amen. The past belongs to God. The present belongs to God. And the future belongs to God as well. Amen. Amen. So there is no tense remaining in time which does not belong to God. So do not live in the past. There are two things we must forget from our yesterdays, our defeats and our victories. Do not remember defeats. I don't remember my defeats. You know why? Because the moment you remember your defeats, you become discouraged. The hurts, the injuries, the wounds which you have received in the past. But there is a person who does all these things. Who makes you remember your past. And he's called the accuser of the brethren. God never remembers your past. Do you know this scripture? But Satan remembers your past in detail. And he comes every time when you come closer to God. He says, this is what you are. He's the accuser of the brethren. The devil is the accuser. He will always bring up a past mistakes. If you have confessed it and repented of it, stop letting the accusation of the enemy keep you from victory. Many times, you know, we are very close to that victory. But because all of a sudden an attack on us, on our minds, on our bodies, maybe on things of the spirit, we lose. Have you seen a... Uh, a runner, a race, person who's running a race, in the last lap when he sees the finishing line and he says, I can't do it. And the moment he says, I can't do it, his entire strength goes down. He can't do it. He thinks in his mind, I can't do it because I've ran so much, now I'm tired. But Paul says, I have run the race. I have kept the faith. I have fought the fight. He says, for now, I'm going to receive a crown of life. Because I've done all these things. Forget the past. Paul wrote these words, church. When he wrote this word, Paul was a person who imprisoned Christians and he killed them. Actually, when he met Christ also, when he met the Lord, he was on his way to do the same thing in Damascus. If Paul can move forward, I believe with all our past, we can also move forward. God does not look at our past. God wants to bury our past. If we give our hands, our past in the hands of God, God will change our present and also our future church. We can't live on yesterday's victory. God gave Israel daily manna. We need daily bread from God. Don't live of yesterday's blessing, of the word, of the spirit, of anything. Receive a fresh manna. When God also provided manna for the people in Exodus, to the people of God. He says, everyone will take only one Omer of that manna per person. You will not take it more because if you keep it more, what will happen to that manna? It will rot. But Israelites knew about it. And they were stiff-necked, rebellious people. And some of them after telling, after Moses telling them, did the same thing. But what happened to that manna? Some lazy characters says, today morning I've got up. Because you have, to, you have to get up in the morning before the sun comes in to receive that, to pick up that. You know that? And getting up in the morning is not a good thing, church. 
How many of you people like getting up in the morning? Pastor Sam has raised his. For me, it is not. Huh? Please, let me be. I'll be honest with you. I don't like to get up in the morning. Okay. A bit lazy character I am. Okay. But that does not mean that I don't give time to God. Huh? Please understand. My first practice starts with God. The point is, they did it because they didn't want to. And what happened? When they saw that manna the next day morning, it was all rotten. Church, we need a fresh manna every day. Amen. How many of us like to eat the stale food? I'm not saying how many of you are forced to eat stale food. I am asking how many of us love to eat stale food. See, all the husbands can smile because they have good experiences, right? Pastor Sam, I do not know about you, but I have good experiences. Sometimes I have to ask my wife, is it 1857 food? You understand 1857? Okay. But this food from 1857. We cannot waste food, right? So we keep it in the fridge. I think it same happens in, in Bangalore also, in Mumbai only it happens. Therefore, we have big fridges. Earlier the fridges were small, now it has become big and big. Now, now earlier there were only one fridge, now we have two and three sometimes in houses. Because we are good holders of everything. But God wants to us have fresh manna every day in his presence. Amen. Strength, the word. The life of God. We have to live one day at a time and focus on what God is doing right now. Amen. The God if we serve is the God of the moment. He's the God of the moment, church. And every moment belongs to God. The next slide. The second thing which we need to do is to face the future. And many of us sometimes are afraid to face the future. We are afraid to face the future. Paul says, reaching forward to those things which are ahead. He, talk, he says, I am reaching forward to those things which are ahead. He knew there were things which are ahead, which he knew, which he wanted to receive it. They were things of God. People who go through surgeries, through operations, they know after that operation, after that surgery, Things are not going to be the same, right or wrong? Suppose if you go for a knee replacement surgery, will you be able to run? Will you be able to walk fast? No. You have to accept the new normal then. What? Of understanding how to walk. You can't put more stress on your knees because there is a surgery there. COVID-19, beautiful example. You all went through it. Maharashtra did not go through it. It topped it. You understand? There were two states which were topping. Okay, one was Kerala, Kerala, and Maharashtra, and the third was Delhi. It, there were three states only, actually. Okay, and we used to, you know, snatch the first place every time. Maharashtra was always in the first. Then later, later, it came down, Maharashtra, Delhi, and Kerala. Kerala at the start went very slowly, and everyone started taking the Kerala model, if you have understood news. And the health minister came in and she spoke how she managed the COVID and everything. And all of a sudden, after one or two months or three months, Kerala was leading. See, Maharashtra leads in all things, whether it's good or bad. Okay. In COVID also, we led. But COVID brought us to Zoom. Right or wrong? Today, our church is meeting on Zoom. Zoom is the new normal of the church, right or wrong? And praise God for it. And I believe God gave this Zoom also. At the right time, this technology was there when COVID struck. When COVID struck. Imagine if that technology of Zoom was not there. What would have happened to the church in two years? Most of our believers, most of our believers would have become cold. Right or wrong? But because of that Zoom, we all zoomed in in the presence of God during COVID as well. Right? And I believe God would bring out this kind of new things. The church of God would always face the future. Why? Because the church is not born of the will of man, but it is born by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, Nothing can stand against the church. 
not even the atrocities not even the thing which you are hearing in karnataka or up or anything nothing can stand i believe this is god's strategy it's god's strategy for us verse 12 paul says he confesses that he has not yet arrived he says i'm not yet arrived there after writing 13 books this man paul he says i'm not yet arrived and if that is true with paul it is true with us as well you can be in the lord for one year two year 10 years I, i don't know how many years pastors have been or how many years you have been in the lord you you not ministry in the lord ministry comes later in the lord is important ministry is something which god gives us to do every time as for me i am 42 years in the lord but that does not mean that i have arrived and my wife will say an amen to that Yes, small. We have no one has arrived there. Paul has not arrived. He's still working on himself. Because why? Because God has more for us. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. People know the scripture. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. At least the scripture is there. You know we should be good in copying also sometimes. He says, "For I know the plans I have towards you," says God. Plans of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Church, we can face the future with a hope in God. With a hope in God. Romans five five talks about a beautiful scripture there about hope, the living hope. Why? Because the Spirit of God has showered His love. Therefore, we have that love, hope. Let's move ahead. Paul says the third thing he says focus on God he says i press towards the goal to win the prize for which god has called me heavenward in christ jesus he presses on he's focusing on god church what did we do in covid what was the focus the entire church of god in india was praying amen i believe here also it was the same thing we all were praying many of the in the second wave many of the christian pastors in the first wave did not happen but in the second wave i i we got message that many of the pastors and the leaders who were struck with covid died many in the second wave huh? praise god for them that they went to be with the lord amen i believe even death is a victory for us that is a victory for why why do i say that because paul says for me to live is christ and to die is gain if i'm absent in the body i will be present with the lord no one can snatch the future of god's people if our focus is right amen if you are not here you are there if you are not in india you will be in zion Amen. Remember this thing and have that hope, church. Have that hope for each one of us. God said, "You will have no other god before us, before Him." He put Israel in captivity for all the sabbath they refused to observe. God gave us a sabbath. COVID was a sabbath for the kingdom of God. COVID was a sabbath for the kingdom of God. We all were at home. Amen. I don't know what you did but it was a beautiful time to get to know the Lord more and more in prayer more and more reading the word fellowshipping praying for people who are not keeping well you know giving hope to people distributing food to the needy taking care of the expenses medical expenses taking care of pastors and pastors wives we had a vidwa fund a pastors vidwa fund helping a lot of pastors in maharashtra even in india church all these things we were able to do because we were focused on god even when that onslaught of covid was going on the focus is very important the next slide sister and i think there's a difference between what you may do you might do and you must do there's a difference these three things are very important what you may do you might do 
and you must do. But what you do, could do and should do. That's important, I do. When you, when, when people get married and they read the covenant of marriage before them, what does the, the boy and the girl say, the groom and the bride says? I do. When I'll do it, what are you saying about it? Right. Important church is what God says, we say, I do, Lord. I do, Lord. You can't chase two rabbits. You'll not catch the either one. You cannot serve two masters, God and Satan. And all God's people said, Amen. It's a, it was a wrong Amen, church. God never said, you will never serve God and Satan. What did the scripture say? Mammon. This was a googly for each one of us who are open, have kept the eyes open and still dozing off. God says, you cannot serve two masters, God and mammon, not God and Satan. Because Satan is already a defeated foe. Amen? Mammon also talks about self. Talks about self. The love of self. Church, understand this thing. We cannot serve two masters. We all have the same number of hours. But some people get more things done. And some cannot do anything. Why? Because they are not able to manage the time which God gives us. And one thing God, I believe, is going to hold us accountable, each one of us, is time. It is not only time management in the professional world. It is time management in the kingdom world as well. How we manage our time, church. Why people get things done? Because they narrow their focus. We can have a to-do list, but everything is not equal on that. Narrow your focus. Understand what God wants of us. Kingdom focus should be what our eyes are upon, church. And if you have kingdom focus, we'll be able to say like Paul, I press on towards the mark of the high calling of God. Sister, we have to say no to good things so that we can say yes to the best thing. The one thing God has called us to. The other day I, I told uh, my church, I was talking in, in a meeting, the Oman church, sorry, not our church. Okay, that's a church that also belongs to God as well. I was talking to the Oman church and I, I told the church, God does not give us good things. And all was zapped. God does not give us good things and I believe that. God does not give us good things. I said, God, I believe even does not give us better things. And they're looking at us. How many of you believe that God does not give us better things? No one could understand my statement. And everyone is looking at me, what is pastor going to speak about the next? What is going on? What he is going to speak? I said, God does not give the good. God, God does not give the better. He gives the best. Amen. You are still are confused, I think. Right? Does God give the best? My goodness. Does God give the best? Thank you for being awake. God gives us the best church. And that is one thing you should understand. To focus on God. God has given the best to you in today. Amen. He's not only going to give you, but what you have is the best from God. Amen. You can look to your wife and say, she's the best woman. You can look to your husband and say, he's the best man. Look to your children and say, they are the best children. Unless our focus and our vision changes, church, we will never be able to move into what God has in our lives, as Paul writes about it. Spend time with God every day. That, that scripture, Matthew 6.33, is the scripture which changed my life, revolutionized my life, when I was 21 years of age. The same scripture. It's one of my favorite scriptures. And everyone knows that scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Two parts of the scripture. One belongs to man, the other belongs to God. The first part is man's part. The second part is God's part. If man does his part, God will unfailingly do his part. Amen. He will unfailingly do his part. And that was a covenant which I made with God when I was 21 years of age. And God proved to me that he is faithful. Amen. But when it came to 
the thing which I told God that you can, I will do this thing for you. When it came to my time, I said God delayed for some more time. But God did not delay. God took me at my word and brought me into the ministry. Forced me into the ministry. I can say that. But I'm, today I am very happy. Willing to work with God and to serve God. Earlier I served the secular people. Now I am serving God, the creator of heaven and earth. Amen. But it's God's doing, remember this thing. Don't get into the ministry directly. Nowhere, I will tell you. Work and serve. Till God says, stop work and serve. Amen. Remember, everything should come from God, not from your mind. Don't ever think that ministry and getting into full time is an easy business. Yes, right? Or, yes, yes, pastor. Very difficult. It is very easy to hire, fire people in organizations. But in the kingdom of God, only hiring is allowed. Firing is done by God. Right or no? Hiring is allowed in the kingdom. We can hire. People can come in. But we can't ask people to go out. Even if they are the thorn in the flesh as Paul speaks about. Church, we, under, we, we need to understand. Whatever we do, let us do it all for the glory of God. As 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says. Focus talks about all these things. Focus on God. Whatever we do, church, even if you work in the church, even if you are just cleaning this church or putting on this instrument, let do it with all excellence. I believe in excellence. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of excellence. If you sing, learning to sing, learning to play, learning to minister, learning to even work in your secular work, be the best person you can ever be. Because you and I are God's representatives, God's ambassadors. On this earth. People look at our lives more than the words which we speak. And our works are the best examples of what God has done for our life. And what, who God is. As a finish off, in all things focus on God. Because the God whom we serve is a good God. Is a good God. You know, we have this thing, you know, uh, in uh, New Life Fellowship, you have seen and many, that Don, Mo Don Moin song. Okay. God is good and people will say all the time. And then the pastor will say all the time and then the congregation will say God is good. You have done it here? Done it here? Right. So it is done in most of the churches. It is easy to say, but I would say experience God. That God is good. The last thing. Okay, the one thing which you do that you need to stop doing, what is that one thing? See, everything when you hear the word of God should be followed by an action, a decision. What is that one thing, church, which you want to do, which you need to stop doing? What is the one thing that you're not doing that you should be doing? It's a contrast. It's a jumbling of words, but it is a, the meaning is very clear. There are things which we need to stop doing and there are things which you are not doing to do that thing. Because the price is in spending time to do the will of God, not the will of man. The price which Paul talks about in Hebrews 12 is about the price which God is going to give us not because we have done our will but because we have done His will. Amen. So spend time with God every day. These conclusions are important for me because whatever I have spoken comes in these three, four things. The first thing we spoke about, the one thing you do. Push back to push forward. People who drive four-wheelers know and understand very clearly that there is only one reverse gear and five forward gears. Praise God there are not five reverse gears and one forward gear. Right? Why? Because the vehicle is designed to move forward and not backward. If vehicle has been designed by man to move forward, how much God who designed you and me? He wants us to move ahead. But there are times when you have to go back. Flight backwards to move forward. Focus is putting away things. What are the things we are going to put away today? Understand church. Paul 
about his lineage away, his heritage, his legalism, his strictness as a Pharisee. He put all these things away. Third, gain decisions based focus. Decision should be there on every focus. Get focused. Forget the past. Face the future. Focus on God. That is what Paul is talking about in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. He says, the one thing I do is to leave those things which are behind, to push forward to the mark of the upward prize of God in my life. Church, this is what God did. This is what Paul did for his life. Even when he went through challenges of life, he never lost his focus. Leaders do not lose focus. Because if leaders lose focus, if the captain loses focus, if the commander loses focus, the battle is lost. And a church, I want to tell you, we, each one of us are called to lead people to Christ. Amen. Can have the focus continually. Focus is not Roti kapada makan, sorry, means house, clothes, and the food. Not that. Focus is God. Because God says, look to the birds of the air. They neither sow, neither they reap, neither they gather into their barns, but still their maker feedeth them. Are you not more worthy, more precious than the birds of the air? Church, as I end up, I want to say, you and I are precious in God's sight. God has not made us and called us in the kingdom just to have to eat, drink and be merry. No. God has called us to do something. What is that something that God has called you to do? Be focused in your life. If God has called you to be the best engineer, the best manager, the best CEO, the best pastor, the best leader, of the best husband, let's try to do it. Amen? Because God is the God whom we all have to be accountable one day. We have to stand before him to give whatever we have done. Paul could easily say that thing. So thank you and God bless you. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. I bless you in the name of the Lord.